Thank you for, uh, for having me here. Uh, really happy also uh, going into the same topic that uh, David was talking about. Let's jump into it. So disasters, is it just the tornadoes? It's not. There's a lot of things that could happen to an online industry, uh, online, like, online company, company. We're going to go through, we only have uh, 15, 20 minutes, we're just going to go through everything and see what, where, what threats we have. So a short background about me. I've been doing hosting and IT security for the last 20 years. We've done Internet Vikings for 15 years. I've started an email security company in 2008, also a penetration testing, vulnerability assessment company, and the security hosting group I run. We are over 200 people, like super focused on this. So what are we talking about today? A little bit, uh, first of all, the timeline. What have happened the last 20 years? Also, what issues are we seeing going forward? What security threats? do we have out there? Uh, what is a disaster? Because I will show you, it's many different shapes. And what are our learnings and what can we do um, to solve it and to work with it and, to talk, and also to talk about it? Because I think it's one of the things that we have seen is that people do not talk about it enough. And looking for the last 20 years or 25 years, like. 25 years ago, there was like non-existent. Someone maybe bought the Cisco firewall or a checkpoint firewall uh, at that time, and they thought they were secure. Nothing else happened. Nothing else was done. Then you started started afterwards to have like one engineer went in. Okay, yes, we we need a budget. We need to do something. Then you have the entire IT department and the CTO saying, okay, we need to allocate budget to it. Maybe a little bit of budget, like 10% of your IT budget, 5% was allocated to this critical uh, infrastructure, or this critical problem. So what we are seeing now, and what actually I'm quite happy about, is that we actually have senior management, the board of directors actually addressing the problem. And when they address it, they also, you also get a funding for as a CTO, as a CISO, as a CIO, to actually do something about it. So I'm, I'm super happy that we have all the media attention because that will solve the problem, not tomorrow, but long term. And again, why is there so much attention on it today? And it's all about money. It's all about that there is people are losing money because of it, and that's, that's the whole focus. And that's why it also gets to the news. So what is the biggest security issue? David touched on it. Like, it's, we are, like the, both our companies are addressing the same thing. And I'm really happy that we do. Because in the end of the day, I really believe it will help the industry. And no, DDoS attacks are not an issue anymore. You can buy that for a few hundred dollars. You can buy a solution for maybe a thousand dollars for a complete buff solution. But if for standard DDoS protection, you shouldn't pay extra for it. It should just be included into your service. So it's ransomware. It is ransomware because that will take your entire organization hostage. And you can't do anything with it. So the industry lost quite a lot last year from it. You had the, some of the land-based casinos in September in Vegas that was, were affected because of it. And that's the, that's the issue. That's the problem that we have. And if you look at the, the reason why, why this is happening right now, it's like ransomware is like kidnapping. It is. And kidnapping is not a good crime because you need actually to get some funds. You need to get the money. And that's why kidnappers usually go into jail because the police will have a money trail and just go and get the, the kidnapper. The problem nowadays is that you have the cryptocurrency. And for the last like, five, five to 10 years, 
you have the cryptocurrency that there's a, there's a way to actually get paid for your ransomware attack. So that's why we're seeing this uplift. It's not uh, because of anything else than money and a way to actually get paid if you do something like this. Kind of annoying, but that's, that's the truth. And what we see is like only, like maximum 20% gets to the service and gets to the news. 80% is handled mostly by insurance companies that don't want to show anything. It's handled by the company that don't want to show anything. Maybe they get attacked, they have a good backup system, they just restore the backup in a day or so, call it a temporary malfunction, and everything is up and running again. So, so that's also an issue because then we can't learn from it and actually solve it, like the core of it. So what do we have? Like media loves creating stereotypes. Media loves saying that it's like this evil hacker group from Russia sitting and doing hacks. That's not what it is. This is a lot of people are involved in the ransomware industry worldwide not in one certain country, and it's really um, an issue globally. And what we are, what we are seeing, and I put, pulled some numbers here, is that like 65% of all executives um, had had people like go out and try to get the login details, and. The weakest links on IT security is, of course, the staff. And that's why it's so important to talk about it. And what we have seen is that uh, it's not only email, it's actually phone calls that someone tried to call. Hi, if I get, I will give you half a million if, I give, if you give me your login details to your corporate system. What does that do to a person that might have financial strength, that might be uh, financial issues for that person? Will they take that half a million? You never know. And that's why building these barriers internally in the company, to not, not that all employees have access to all information, but do that kind of segmentation. Because this will just continue. And I think there's a lot of attacks that we see. There's the evil hackers. That was just an insider job. There's so many things like that. And, no one will share it, no one will talk about it, but it, it's there. Another thing that we have um, looked at is the phone calls. Like how you are able to secure uh, phone calls and also make sure that the standard phone call today is not a secure line. Because you can, with an app, you can spoof a phone number and you can spoof the vo voice through AI. You don't need to have a, um, a super sophisticated system for it. You just need a, an app in your phone, and you're good to go. So how to solve this as a company? Is it just to buy a cyber insurance? Like for us, we like, spend tens or if not hundreds of thousands each year on our cyber security, cyber insurance. insurance. Yes, it's one part, you need to have it, but it's not like the only uh, way to solve it. And what we have seen, like still, a lot of people still get fired, you had the cyber insurance, you maybe got some money back, but what we have seen is that in Arkansas, we had the CEO fired, 300 employees the day for Christmas due, some, due to a ransomware attack, also Lake City fires employee after paying ransom and malware attack, Someone, um, some clinic in Finland got fired because of it. It happens. And that's why it's so important as a manager, as a senior leadership, to focus on it before it happens. Also, what happens, what to do when it happens? It's like, have a plan, do a fire drill, talk about it, and understand what to do if it happens and always negotiate, because the attacker wants something that you have, and that's money. And that money, you can say, okay, if I pay half of what you are asking for, um, if I pay you today, like it's just a negotiation, they just want to have the money and move on to the next case. They don't care about you at all. 
just try to negotiate it down and then try to and then maybe pay if that's the route you want to go. Talking a bit about uh, disasters, the disasters, is it just a tornado? No, it's not. We are talking about the AT&T bombing in Tennessee um, four years ago. It hit the AT&T data center. It was a lot, like, I know some companies from the industry was actually down because of it. And um, that's the kind of thing that could happen. We also have fires. This is a... Uh, in Strasbourg in France, a big uh, data center fire four, three years ago, two years ago, and it was tens of thousands of servers. They just burned up. And it took a lot, like, I think it was over 100 firefighters to get control over it. Also, explosions. This is the Google data center in, uh, in Iowa that uh, got hit two years ago, or one and a half year ago that affected like, a lot of the Google services. The, the Google search was a little bit unstable at the time. So this is not only happening to smaller companies, it's happening to everyone. It's happening to the hyperscalers, it's happening to the smaller hosting companies. Uh, also, Google had some issue with a, um, some battery components got, the, like, got some water on it in France, also exploded. This happens for everyone. And also long downtime. It's like, this was a hosting company in Denmark. They got attacked by ransomware. The entire hosting company literally went down because of it. And the customers had a very, they couldn't recover from it. Same problem. It's, if things goes down, then you need to have a way to solve it. So what sort of learnings from it? And what can we learn? What can we do to, to handle it before it happens? And one thing I always say is like, have multiple vendors. Do not just have one, one vendor that will solve everything for you. They won't. If it's a big, big hyperscaler company, if it's a small hosting company, they will not solve everything because they only focus on their business. They don't really care about yours. So have multiple vendors. That would be one, the main thing, main takeout that I would give to people. Also, fiscal redundancy. Do not just have a hundred million, two hundred million dollar operation from one rack, one data center, one building. There's better ways to solve that and to have that kind of redundancy. Um, and also, one thing, and this is one of the things that I think you should take with you. I see that some of you still are a bit hungover from yesterday, from Hard Rock. But this is the thing that you should take with you, that have unplugged uh, access, data that no attacker can go in and tamper with. It could be a USB stick, it could be a tape drive, it could be a server that's literally unplugged, but that's what you should have. Because what we saw here was that 20 years of data just gone, because the attacker, of course, they encrypt the, the main, uh, data, but also encrypt the database, uh, the backup, because they know if they encrypt the backup, there's no, you need to pay, and your likelihood of paying is so much higher. So that's why the backup is also, if you have an online backup, a backup that's online, that's accessible by, by the attacker, they will attack it as well. It just will happen. So a tape backup or something, it doesn't need to be far away. You just said it's offline, that you can restore it. So how to invest into it? Like, this is the tricky question. Okay, how much does it cost? Because it's a question that we usually get. And I would say, to have you as an unplugged storage, we're talking a few percentage, maybe 10% extra cost to handle that. It's not, it's not a massive thing. If you want to do like active, active uh, hot failover with all the bells and whistles to it, of course it will cost you a lot of money. But if it happens, if there's an issue, then of course you are able to uh, sustain a bigger threat. So it's, and again, in my opinion, uh, hosting cost is a very small portion of your usual cost in a company. You have staff, you have other 
bigger cost usually, and hosting, it, we're talking usually a few percentage, if even that. And that's, uh, if you increase that with one or two percent, or it's nothing to what kind of protection you're getting. So the conclusion is, talk about disaster, make it a fighter, make a plan, make, have an idea of what to do if it happens to you, because that will enable you to actually do it quicker and solve it quicker if it happens. Like everyone have a, uh, like a document if a fire happens, if something happens with your office, you need to do, uh, evacuate the building. You have a plan for that. But you should have it for the ransomware as well, because it's so much more likely that it will happen than a, uh, a fire at your office. So talk about it, plan for it. And one thing I also, also want to mention, as of today, uh, there were a big uh, Apple uh, security incident yesterday. That, so everyone should upgrade to the iOS 17.4. Go to your phone, do upgrade, uh, because there was a big, two big security flaws in iOS yesterday that was released. So do that, all of you, so you don't get hacked. And um, thank you very much for... A good session and uh, thank you.